5.50 KTRS. Before we head out and uh, turn it over to Martin Kilcoin, who was in Los Angeles for the Los Angeles Rams game against the Oakland Raiders. Uh, he's going to be there all weekend long covering the practices as well. Uh, hey, listen to this. The Funny Bone in Westport. Yep. Funny Bone Westport, our next guest, will be there all weekend long. Tommy Jonigan, uh, comedian, TommyJComedy.com. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning. We were talking here off the air. You were in St. Louis um, for the Carney charity event in uh, 2011. Yeah, yeah. I lived here, no, I guess not not then, but I lived here for five years. Uh, so, you know, I grew up in Southern Illinois, so I'm a Cardinals fan and then lived in St. Louis. And I think that's how I met Carney and then um, Sorry to hear that. was able to do that show. Yeah. <laughs> but I was doing that show during the, the famous Game 6 against World the Series. Rangers. The, considered one of the greatest World Series games in the history of the World Series. I was the greatest, right? Is there it's, Has anyone come up with another one Well, there's be a better? couple of them. I mean, there's that one. There's Game 6 of the Mets and, 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 uh, Do- and Boston, where it goes through Buckner's legs. There's a couple of Joe Carter home runs, Game 7s. Yeah, but the one, I, I don't know, the, the, the Buckner one was, uh, you know, it's an error, and then they won. Right. This one was down to the last strike and the last only, out. Those are the only two World Series games that were down to the last strike. And, and the, the Cardinals did it twice. twice. Yeah. Yeah. So take that. Take that. I think we've settled it. All right. There you go. Change the Wikipedia page. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we were also ta- So you were, you grew up in Southern Illinois? Yeah, yeah. Near uh, Carbondale. And what wanted to make you? What what happened in your childhood that said I want to be a comedian? Um, it, I just wanted to. Uh, actually, it came from watching Letterman as a kid. My stepdad said he was from Indiana, and. Um, uh, he started as a stand-up comedian when I was like eight years old. Right. And I thought, well, I'll just do that <laughs> at eight, which is fine for an eight-year-old. But then I just kept saying it for years and years, and no one corrected me and said it was stupid. So it sounds cute when an eight-year-old says, I'm going to do stand-up and have a show like Letterman. But then when they get to be like 17 and 18, and, they're, and I was just telling college guidance counselors, and uh, I remember I was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do stand-up, and then... Uh, Get a, you know, get a TV show eventually. And she's like, um, so what would your, what would a backup plan be so that we could pick a major? And I was like, I don't need a backup plan. And I, she, I just wouldn't, she, all she wanted to know was like, do you want to take English or math? Like, just give me something. And I was just like, I don't need a backup plan. I'm going to do stand up. And uh, that's that's how I got an associate's degree at Rin Lake Junior College. So how did you, how did you start? What did you do to become just, a stand up? I started in, um, Belleville. Yeah, okay. Uh, just at 18, doing open mics in Belleville at a, at a comedy club in a hotel uh, above a TGI Fridays. That's as low as it gets. So I started from the bottom. That's the first step. And now I'm here. <laughs> now, you've, uh, now you've gone exactly 12 miles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's I started there, and then it was like, it, you know, at 18, you don't know anything. I, then I started um, trying to go to other clubs. One of my first paid gigs was in um, Springfield, Illinois, and uh, I remember the door guy wouldn't let me in because I wasn't 21, and he wouldn't believe that I was on the show. I know this is radio, but I don't look... That's my most common thing, is people will say I don't look like I would be funny. (laughs) Um, I think You're not funny. You don't look funny. I think, uh, on one hand, I think people don't know what insults are, and on the other hand, I think they think it's a compliment. (laughs) People are like, "Oh, you don't look funny," and I'm like, "Yeah, that's. I mean, that's like me. You're a talk show. What do you What do you talk about? Well, what do you mean? What do I talk you about? You don't look like you talk on the radio. <laughs> what? Um, so yeah, I started in Southern Illinois and then um, lived in Chicago for a little bit and then moved here for five years. Okay, but now you're out of New York. Now you live in New Los York. Angeles. Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you're on. You're on. We see you all, all over the place. You were on with um, at night with Chris Hardwick. Yeah, I've done, uh, I did, I haven't done it in a while, I think I did a couple times of At Midnight, and then, um, I, you know, I was fortunate enough to do Letterman seven times before he retired, and then a couple specials on Comedy Central, and just other, like, small TV things. I'm, like, not, uh, you know, not on TV enough to be a bother, but every once in a while, I just look like a normal white guy with glasses. Seven times on Letterman is a pretty established career. I mean, you can, you can go. Go back to your guidance counselor and you know yeah. tell her to go piss off uh, because <laughs> being on Letterman seven times. Um, 
Is it like Orny Adams in the movie where they critique you and tell you to change your jokes as you go? No, I had a pretty fortunate experience, and I think it was because from very early on, I was like, I want to do Letterman. So I, as a fan and knowing the show and all that, I kind of wrote a set that I thought, well, this is for Letterman. And then the booker saw it, and lucky enough, like he literally, uh, I mean, the real, like, the, the in, inside baseball part of it was I showed him seven minutes, and then he picked four and a half of that. Nice. And that's what I did. Like, right. no notes, no changes. Did, did Letterman come over you, shake your hand, say yeah, thank yeah. you very much, have a good day? Yeah. Yeah. So the first one was fun, and it was good, and uh, Letterman came over and said, you know, very funny. And then uh, the booker goes, you hit a home run, but not a grand slam. And I was like, well, I can't help that people aren't getting on base in front of me. I'm a clutch hitter over here. Uh, so then I came back the second time, and he goes, you hit a grand slam. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, we got a, we got a better, better group of guys around me. I mean, right. It's real good to be here. Can't wait to the postseason. What's the gift you get on Letterman Show? Do you get a gift? No. You don't get the a gift. The first time I did it, I got a T-shirt and a coffee mug. And then that's it. Then he has really good chocolate chip cookies hmm. in the green room yeah, right. and a nice plate of fruit, but no gift. No gift. Are there gifts on these other shows? I thought they, I thought they got, got gifts. Chris Hardwick's show, that At Midnight show, gives like a nice, uh, I got this uh, really nice kind of cookies and uh, dessert tray and then a t-shirt. Okay. All right. That's These people enough. must know I love cookies. I guess so. Uh, Tommy Johnigan is a comedian. He's going to be at uh, the Funny Bone starting tonight. Two shows tonight and three shows tomorrow. Two tonight, three tomorrow. Uh, the Funny Bone in Westport. Is there one show that's better than another? Um, I would say my show's better than someone else's. <laughs> uh, no. Um, you know the the general rule, which is changing a little bit, but the. Um, you, don't the hecklers come out on Friday night? <clears throat> Friday night late show is when people... It's not the hecklers come out. I think people come to the Friday late show. They're a little more tired. So uh, the f I'm going to say this and people are going to come to the show. But I would say the second show Saturday. I'll rank them for you. Okay. For the people. If you, you buy <laughs> tickets, hold on, get on the phone. Second show Saturday is the best show. Um, if that sells out, go to the first show Saturday. Okay. If that sells out, go first show Friday. If that sells out, this is uncommon. Go midnight Saturday, and then Friday late show. Do you do you ever um, get up on stage when you're working on a material and just riff? I'll riff. Yeah, yeah. That's how. Cause I'll um I'll have I like to think of these are the things that this is something I want to talk about, and these are the couple things that are funny, and you never know until you say it in front of a crowd. So I also like to go like I you know, I'll go to riff to see if I can grow it and find something that I couldn't think of in my my shady hotel room. Do you ever have do you ever have a great line or a great set or a great riff and you forget it and you can't remember it and you can't write it down? I record every set. Every set. So if I riff it on stage, it's recorded somewhere and I'll remember I'll remember like, "Oh, I said something." and I'll know to go back and try to find it. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's like uh, this I, I'm telling this new whatever about um, cuddling and it's like it's one of my new favorite just the whole bit is one of my favorite things my whole act is just true stories and it's just from my life so it's easy I just kind of try to remember something that happened and try to make it funny right. but I have this thing about cuddling and I, com I made it up in the moment just from because uh, I just left my girlfriend the night before I was, like on the, I was at home and uh, we cuddled I'm the little spoon okay and I always thought that was like, that seems like, as a comedian, I, I think that's funny. But as a guy who just likes to be the little spoon, I'm like, well, this, this isn't funny. This is normal, right? <laughs> and like, so uh, I just sat on stage and people laughed enough that I was like, oh, yeah, it is, it is weird that I make her cuddle me. I feel like I'm a feminist. <laughs> I'm like, you can do anything a man can do. Now get in here and hold me until I fall asleep. <laughs> Tommy Johnigan, um, uh, uh, tonight, two shows tonight, three shows Saturday night, Funny Bone in Westport. Uh, tickets online, tickets at the door? Tickets online, box office. Uh, my um, website has a link to the ticket place, and then you can call the box office later today. TommyJComedy.com. Uh, where can we see you, TV, going forward? Anything coming up? Um, I'll, I'll probably do another a late night set 
later this year, maybe um, see how that Colbert shakes out. Okay. Maybe do a Colbert or a Fallon or a Conan. Well, that's, that's nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause this, uh, who knows how... Uh, Colbert, people are fascinated because we don't know who he is. We don't know who he is. Right. Um, he's done a couple of these online videos, and I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not anybody... Have you seen the online videos like promoting the show? Yeah. He's still a little in character. Yeah. He's still using a, he's putting on a voice. Right. Yes. And that's the thing, you know, I, I, I think some of the late night show hosts are not great. And I think I'm a big Letterman guy and, uh, I, but none of them put on a fake voice. Right. It's, it, it'll be interesting. It'll be, even if he's not doing that political character, like he needs to talk in his real voice because people will pick up on that. <laughs> it'll be interesting to see. Tommy Johnigan, comedian tonight, a funny bone, three shows tomorrow night. Thanks for coming Thanks in. Thanks for having me in. Appreciate You're it. always welcome. Uh, 950 here, Big 550 KTRS.